Good morning, folks. We've got ET-related space news, studies relating to the ongoing cyclical catastrophe of Earth, and a new weapon against censorship is rising. We'll hit it all starting at spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on the sun was mostly quiet, but not totally. The active regions continue to grow in number, just as they did in 2010 before ramping up for flares in 2011. Filaments are growing and destabilizing more easily just as a decade ago, and the little pop practice runs for future big boy flaring are becoming more numerous at the little spots as well. Solar wind and geomagnetic conditions are calming entirely. Had a brief cosmic ray health alert yesterday, but it's waned completely now. Let's start the articles nice and easy with a greening map of the world. The brown areas need attention, but overall, since we know these trends have continued through 2020, this looks like a greening planet. Also of note is that the greening world is creating relatively cooler conditions in those greener regions, not a bad result of extra plant food. Okay, we've eased in. Now I'll quickly drop this article, which is in today's link list for you, just some of the ways they are going to look for ET planets in the future, but I bet every one of you can work your imagination beyond the limited scope of the article. And speaking of imagination, I am not sure this guy has one. The subject here is Oumuamua and how it came in and left on a nearly impossible track, and how its odd shape adds to the weirdness of the entire interstellar object encounter. These things, including an apparent acceleration after it passed the sun, made some big-name astronomers ask if it was an alien probe. This guy is saying that because they would be able to build super telescopes and other technology that would render such a probe pointless, that it couldn't possibly be one. And while he might be right on the probe aspect, that's not the only reason to send something to a planetary system. Pickups, drop-offs, just off the top of my head. Jettisoned vessels or vessels rejoining could also explain the speed changes too. I bet your imagination could work this one as well. Up next, a proper debunking article, this time against one of the slick little hiding spots for dark matter physicists. Primordial black holes are so frustrating to read about because of how little sense they make, especially as the answer to dark matter. Top marks here in the debunking. And we're on to Nova Science. After the studies showing that recurrent nova are triggered by material accumulation in the atmospheres, or plasma turbulence driven magnetic instability, or both, we were only left to ask where the other nova remnants can be found, and while we've shown how numerous flare and transient events are actually great candidates, these guys have the telescope, and they went looking for the Nova too. On the left, blue and green, the newly discovered signature. On the right, red and yellow, the best we could hope to see that area before. They're finding circles and shocks and every perfect signature over and over and over again. Kind of absurd. The technology suggests they're capturing less than half, and some of these are so small they should be called nanonova, since they may have had less energy than a solar flare, just shaking off the dust. And so when, on the same day, Harvard, two national labs, Berkeley, Stanford, and many more come together to more than double the number of ones they can only detect in millimeter wavelengths, oh boy, some of those are indeed supernova outside the galaxy, but many are micronova or even super flare events on the triggered stars. Now, to get to our top story, let's recall the increase in polar mesospheric summer echoes, which are driven by electrically charged dust and ice. They not only have an excuse to be increasing due to an increase in charged particle penetration due to Earth's weakening magnetic field, but we've been awaiting a change in the dust and gas content of the inner solar system as the galactic sheet arrives, and that's another great explanation. But well, if it isn't the dust of the inner system chiming itself in, saying, hey, you forget about us, we're already here. Couple worthy notes on this one. First, they now believe that dust that creates the zodiacal light is coming from Mars. They think this because of its clear boundaries, but they also admit to having no clue how that would even happen or work mechanistically. Go science. But more importantly, the ring of dust that exists in the inner system is absolutely something that should be changing alongside the other planets, which we've shown. So is this new revelation about the inner dust ring pointing to mistakes in the past? Or did they get it right before, and now the new data is just showing its change, tricking them into thinking they had it wrong before? And if indeed that is the case, then we have a one-two punch to explain the polar mesospheric summer echoes, likely driven by Earth's weakening magnetic field and the arriving galactic current sheet. That extra dust and the charged particles are the two things known to create those summer echoes and fuel them. So I submit, this is still an infinitely better explanation than a slight cooling of the mesosphere where all the vapor is ice at that altitude anyway. 
Now, folks, I'm worried about censorship. Many of you are, too. Many of you know Adrian D'Amico. He's spoken at our conferences. He has a popular channel, and he has been censored for years along with many others. Now, the only reason that the censored don't immediately explode onto every other platform is because that's impossible. There are too many. It takes too much time, and there is too much to remember. But one upload, and the severed head of the Hydra can become 10 more, 20 more. Folks, he is not asking for a lot on his Kickstarter, and he's off to a great start. I am not invested in the project. I am a backer of this Kickstarter project. I am not being paid for this in any way. Adrian is doing a great thing here against censorship, and he happens to be my childhood best friend. I can assure you, by the way, this is the only way I'd ever post to all those other platforms you guys ask me about every day. We greatly appreciate your support. As always, tons of resources at our channel playlist and at suspiciousobservers.org. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.